So I, uh, I sat in on your lectures here, I think about 20 years ago, and I'd forgotten that one thing that I learned from you was how to draw dotted lines on chalkboards. <laughs> Which I actually used myself when, uh, when I was a professor for some number of years, so a very useful skill. <laughs> but, but here's what I'd like to ask you. I'd like to ask you uh, when you started uh, teaching uh, physics and how your lectures evolved over time. How, what was the last question? Uh, how, how did your uh, lectures evolve over time? How, <laughs> didn't get it. How did what? your lectures evolve over time? Yeah. <laughs> I think I was always eccentric. <laughs> it's true. And so from day one, my lectures were always different from the mean. But of course, they evolved in a way that grew substantially. And that is not because of the dotting of the line, because I could already do that in high school. <laughs> Today, there are hundreds of my lectures that can be viewed on the web. Two complete courses, the first course for freshmen, the second course, electricity and magnetism, and the first course for sophomores, vibrations and waves. They are now being viewed daily on average by 6,000 people all over the world, which is two million per year. And so every morning when I wake up and during the day, about two dozen questions come to me by email from all over the world. <laughs> Many ask questions and I answer every single email. But it is amazing that many physics professors want to know how I make those dotted lines. <laughs> True. There is a two-minute videotape <laughs> which someone made. Someone looked at all the dotted lines that I ever drew in 801 <laughs> and put that in one videotape. <laughs> it's a riot. It's, you see, brr, 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 Okay, we have time for a few more questions. So this is, I guess, a more personal Speak question. Speak as loud as you can because I have a hearing okay. disability. This is a more personal question. I was just wondering, like, what inspired you to become such a great professor? Why is what? What inspired you to become a professor and a great one at that? Can you translate? I can't hear you. What inspired you? Why is what? What inspired you to become a professor? Oh, that was luck. <laughs> I had my training in nuclear physics and then I had some offers for one year postdoc to the United States. And for reasons that are not so clear, I picked MIT because a whole new field was born here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, initiated by Professor Bruno Rossi, who was at MIT, executed beautifully by Riccardo Giacconi, who received not too long ago the Nobel Prize for that. That was the discovery of X-ray astronomy. And even though I knew nothing about astronomy at the time, I decided it was time to change fields. So I accepted the offer at MIT, and then, for reasons that are still unclear to me, 
but George Clark, who is in the audience, knows probably why they offered me a professorship. <laughs> and I never left. <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> so here's the golf ball. I'm going to fire the gun now. Close. Close. Reasonably close. Well, since it's only reasonably close, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> perhaps it would help if we give it a little bit of leeway. There goes the gun. Here comes the ball. And this is just in case. Tape it down. So as I'm going to push this now, give it a push. The gun will be triggered when the middle of the car is here. You've seen how high that ball goes, so that ball will go <laughs> And depending upon how hard I push it, they may meet here or they may meet there. You ready for this? You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Physics works. <laughs> See you Wednesday. Well, I just want to thank you for the lecture. And as I was a, wondering. As a youngster, um, <laughs> as a, in a youngster, I read a, a book which told me to stare at the sun, then I can change things by staring at things. Now, what I, uh, what I did was, I used to stay at, sun, at sunset. You stared at the sun. sun at sunset. At sunset. sunset for a few Not a very good idea. You I have know, to be very I, careful. I found out the hard way. And so you damaged your eyes and you asked for it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, I got it. Um, but that, the, the key thing was that, that I was, after that, I was supposed to stay at a white wall, which I did. But, but, but I saw a uh, a red, I know exactly a what red you saw. Spot moving around wherever I Probably the be. spot was not red but green. Uh -huh. It's a well-known phenomenon. Uh -huh. So you have indeed done something to your retina, uh -huh. and that is the message that is sent to your brains, uh -huh. then tell you the green after effect. It's a very well-known effect. Uh -huh. okay. You don't even have to look to the sun. Okay. You can even do it with a light like that and stare in that light for some time, and then all of a sudden look at the white wall and you see a different color. It's a very interesting thing. Yeah. And physics cannot explain that. But you see, this is, this is neurology. <laughs> and so it's not our responsibility to explain <laughs> it. <laughs> what I want to pursue today, I will get back to this in the future. What I want to do today is to generate a disturbance in a medium which has an infinite number of coupled oscillators, which is a string to generate in there. So I take a string and I wiggle the end and then I want to evaluate with you what's going to happen. And so for this I need some assistance from someone, Nicole, would you mind? Just hold this firmly in your hand. Now most of you may think that this is a spring with a P as in Peter. But no, it is a string with a T as in Tom. You will see that. I'm going to use this as a string. I'm going to put tension on it, T, which is what we needed also for the n-coupled oscillators. And the amount of mass that we have, we express that normally in terms of the mass per unit length. Remember, in the other case, we had little m divided by L. Well, we call that now mu. So that's how much mass per unit length we have. And what I want to do now is just shake my hand, and then you tell me what you see. You ready? There we go. Are you ready, Nicole? What did you see? Just tell me what you see right after I do this. What did you see right after I did this? The disturbance moved. 
That's number one that we have to understand. Why does it move? Now, look what happens at Nicole's side. I generate a pulse which is like this. I'll call that a mountain for now. And only look at the moment that the mountain reaches her and something comes back at me. And then stop looking because things begin to wander back and forth. And tell me what comes back at me. So I'm going to send a mountain to Nicole. What came back at me? A valley. Now I'm going to send a valley to Nicole. What do you think is coming back? Very good. It's hard. To, it's actually, you know, that it, I don't know why it is. It's very hard to, to generate a valley. Let me, let me do a mountain again. This is a mountain. That comes back as a valley, and I'll try a valley. Okay, I'll try to do a valley. So I go down and up. Yeah, that was a good one. And you saw that. <laughs> yeah. Well, because of you, it worked. Thank you very much. You did a great job. So now we have to understand two things, and that is why does it propagate, and why does a mountain come back as a valley, and why does a valley come back as a mountain? Continuous medium, infinite number of coupled oscillators. Thank you for a beautiful lecture. Um, I'm tempted to ask you what pi is. It's not so easy for me <laughs> to understand you. Uh, thank you for a beautiful lecture. I'm tempted to ask you what pi is, but I think I better ask instead. Well, uh, have you ever, ever had gone to a Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, are you familiar with the alleged phenomenon of a green flash at sunset, and, the and is yes. can you explain that, please? I've seen it many times. The explanation is not as simple as you may think. I would suggest, and I, may, I mean that seriously, since it, a short answer is not possible, that you look it up on the web, it's well described. I have seen it many times in Austria, in the mountains, that indeed the last fraction of setting of the sun that you may, but not always, see a green flash. And if you ever want to see it, you have to be with two people. One person has to be standing next to you, and you should not look at the sun. Because if you look at the sun, even though there's almost no sunlight left, you still, your, your retina is still too overexposed. And so the person next to you, when you look like this, should, should say, look now! And then you look, <laughs> and that's the way it is. Suppose I have here a string, a rope, like we have there. And I stick into that rope, I attach to the rope this wheel, just like so. And I let it go. Well, we all know it will happen. <laughs> Clunk. It's clear. All right. But now I'm going to spin it before I let it go. Where's the wheel? The wheel is here. So we'll spin it up, and then we'll put it in here. Notice the way I'm spinning it. I'm holding it away from you now. From now. I'm going to change it and do it differently next. There it goes. About 10 seconds. Isn't that amazing? And it rotates seen from below clockwise. Now it's going this way, and I'm going to redo the experiment, changing the direction of rotation, and then it will go the other way around. And now the angular momentum, is it rotating like this, is pointing here. Spin angular momentum is pointing like this. Torque is like this, 
And so the spin angular momentum is chasing that, chasing that torque. I'm the spin angular momentum, I'm the torque. This is the torque. It's chasing it. All right, so I have this in my right hand. That's all right. And now I will... So when I spin it up... So let it first go around, which was roughly 10 seconds, what we calculated. And now I'm going to put two kilograms here at the end. And then you'll see an instantaneous increase in the precession frequency. You see, it goes much faster now. I take it off, and then it goes back to its roughly 10 seconds. So what I have done is, I have increased this torque, but not at the expense of M. Because the reason why the M cancels is because the moment of inertia has an M in it. But if I just hang this object on it, that doesn't change the moment of inertia of the spinning wheel. None of this is intuitive. None of this is intuitive.